Hey, Dr. Dave Marquis here, and I wanted to share some information about a kind of a complex topic, but um, it affects all of us, and it has to do with sterols. And sterols are basically fat. And when you think about fat, most people kind of say, hey, I don't want to do anything with that. I want to stay away from it. Um, but every cell in your body is made of fat. Matter of fact, when we're chasing cholesterol and trying to reduce that number, you're, you're basically reducing your body's capacity to repair itself and in a significant way, manage your hormones. So the aspect of sterols that I wanted to talk about today was really a piece of hormonal balance. So when we get into, well, my age group, when we're in our mid-50s, we start to notice that... Um, some of our tissues don't seem to repair as readily as they used to. And you might find that your energy curve isn't exactly where you'd like it to be. Um, you might find that your muscle tone is diminishing a little bit. And your recovery time is taking a little bit longer. And you're like, what's going on? Now, the wheels are falling off of this bus. Well, what can I do to make myself function better? Well, there's and as I said, it's kind of a broad topic, so I'm trying to hone in on one area and not uh, get out into the weeds too far. Um, the aspect that I want to talk about today, but as I do so, I want you to keep in mind that the whole conversation of cholesterol does play into this. So individuals who are intentionally suppressing their cholesterol might notice that some of the things that I just mentioned actually get amplified because you're kind of accelerating that process. So if you fit into that camp, that, that's a whole nother conversation unto itself that you might want to look at and say, well, you know, there might be better ways for me to manage my inflammation and understand cholesterol as a whole and um, help my body to actually repair itself rather than uh, snipping the wires to the fire alarm, so to speak, and just cutting off cholesterol as a, a whole entity. So that topic aside, and I promise I'll do another video on that one. Today I wanted to talk about one of our pro-hormones. It's kind of a mothership hormone that helps us with all those things that I just mentioned. So uh, muscle tone in terms of uh, keeping your muscle mass, your energy curve, your recovery time, um, even your skin integrity. And that is DHEA. So dehydroepiandestrone is a sterol. It's a sterol that is made by a couple of different tissues in the body. Your adrenal glands are responsible for much of its production. And the signal for your adrenal glands to do that work actually comes off of your brain, out of the pituitary and your brain happens to also be about 74% fat. So when we're, we're thinking about fat, it's a really important compound that the body uses for a lot of really important things. Well, as we get older, our ability to make and manage DHEA can become compromised in males and females. And you'll start to notice some of the things related to your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone, and your cortisol all starting to get impacted because DHEA impacts all of those. So if you kind of thought of it as a tree, DHEA, and then another member of that same family called pregnenolone, they live up here. And then when the body makes that, it starts to spread out and it'll start to convert them into testosterones and estrogens and progesterones and cortisols. And these are all key hormones that we need in an abundant supply on a daily basis to allow ourselves to function, to feel mentally clear, um, to have adequate moisture in our skin and all of our tissues. So I like people to know those numbers. And sometimes it can be confusing because you'll say, okay, when I go onto a shelf and I, I look for what could I supplement with and what form is gonna be better for me, you'll, you'll see that there's a whole a variety of them. Some of them are transdermal, where they're going to go through the skin. Some of them are in liposomal forms, which means that you have a, a fat bound within another fat, and it's going to go in and be absorbed within your cheeks or under your tongue. 
Um, sometimes it's actually a tablet that's supposed to open up inside the body. And, and that one, in some instances, might be the, the least absorbable, but also that does come down to your own biochemistry. So there can be a little bit of trial and error in starting to understand how you can supplement and correct imbalances in this. The testing of it is quite simple. There's a saliva test that you can do and there's blood tests that you can do to get an idea of what your daily production of DHEA is. And one of my favorite tests actually looks at DHEA, cortisol, progesterone, because there's this thing called progesterone steel. When you get really stressed out, your body will actually start to try to make more cortisol to handle your stress and it'll start to steal your sex hormones to convert them backwards back into cortisol so your body can deal with the stress. Well, when that happens, you're gonna burn through more of your DHEA. And this is one of those things that leads to that whole topic of adrenal burnout or adrenal fatigue that so many people deal with today. The higher our stress load, the, the less efficient sleep quality that we achieve, you're gonna find that these glands, your pituitary, your thyroid, your adrenal glands, they're gonna to start to struggle. So I encourage everybody, um, get baseline testing. Uh, do the saliva testing or, or get some, if you're going in for your next blood chemistry with your physician, get a blood test that will at least give you a, an idea of that baseline. I do like the saliva better in general because you're able to do it at home, convenient, and also you're able to start to do multiple times in a day so you can kind of see what your curve is over 24 hours. So if someone has a sleep issue, it's great to have that type of information so you can see when your adrenal glands wake up because sometimes they don't and in some people they're on all day long. <laughs> they're just constantly in that fight flight mode in that sympathetic drive. So. I have with me here a couple of, uh, and these are just some brands that I use, but you know, there's a lot of different manufacturers. These are some that I have found to be useful. Um, the transdermal DHEA um, is a great application where you can control your dosing. Um, there's also suppositories kind of on a similar concept like this that can be used intravaginally uh, for the female population that work really well and um, they solve some of the, the concerns related to vaginal dryness and um, general dryness throughout the whole body. So adding in a little bit of DHA to get yourself back onto the map is encouraged in that sense. There's also um, a variety of different dosings and that's where I really encourage you to work with your physician to find out where your levels currently are and the the other related hormones so that you just don't willy-nilly start throwing a whole bunch at yourself. Um, I'll typically start in some of the lower ranges, 5 to 25 milligrams with individuals, and sometimes I'll even pulse that where we'll do a day on, a day off, a day on, a day off until we get an idea for how they're feeling. When an individual is truly low and their body is just needing more, it's um, a relatively quick response and they'll say, yeah, you know what? I feel more energetic. I'm a little more mentally clear. Uh, I, I'm doing better on the days that I'm taking that. And that's when I'll say, okay, well, let's go ahead and move to daily and see how that works. Generally, females will require less than males if you're doing the, well, any dosing or oral, transdermal or suppository. Some individuals, depending on their biochemistry, might also need, uh, I'm gonna pull up two others here, something called pregnenolone, which is a co-factor relative to how DHEA is manufactured and taken into the body. And so sometimes you might find that you need to actually augment the DHEA with a little bit of pregnenolone to make the body take it in and convert it over efficiently. Again, this is where testing can be invaluable. Now, one other category, since DHEA converts into, as I said, all these other hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and cortisol, some, particularly women, may not want the testosterone side. And to inhibit that conversion, there's a whole other form of DHEA called 7-keto DHEA, which is in the same family, but it's down one biochemical step and it won't turn into uh, testosterone in any appreciable amount. 
So you can still produce the estrogens, the progesterones, the cortisol, but you're going to get less of that testosterone side. Having said that, women need testosterone as well. So I, I don't want to discourage somebody from using standard DHEA. I just want you to understand what your body actually needs. And, and that will vary from person to person. So along the lines of the conversion process, uh, one of the things that I would encourage people to be aware of is that like anything, you can have too much of a good thing. And although initially your labs might show that you're deficient, your body's rate of uptake might be different than somebody else around you. And so this is where continual monitoring can be beneficial. If you happen to overshoot the runway on DHEA, some of the things that you'll find out is that you can produce excess testosterone. That's one of the things that people tend to become aware of most quickly. And when they see that, they, they might notice that they develop a little bit of acne, um, they might have uh, excess activity within their sweat glands. Um, they might find that their temperature regulation starts to go on the high side. If you see any of those things, you probably would be a good candidate for using that seven keto form of DHEA because it's not going to shunt off into the testosterone realm as readily. Um, you, you might also just need to pull back on the dosing. For the lion's share of my patient population females that are over 50, the 25 milligram range tends to be appropriate if on their lab they're showing to be in need and that would be a, a safe starting spot. But I've certainly started even lower than that down in the five milligram range. And then for some, I find that their body just has an affinity for shunting it right over to testosterone and so we'll do the seven keto for them and that's the only form that we'll use, maybe with a little bit of pregnenolone, and that works quite well for them. So realize that you can have a little bit too much. Um, it's not difficult to, to dial it in. It just takes a little bit of um, information gathering on your part. The things that you could expect to see improvement with by understanding these hormone levels. Uh, joints, I've seen many, many patients find relief from joint pain enhanced muscle tone and mass, enhanced skin integrity, enhanced quality of sleep and better stress management, uh, moisture throughout the body, and upregulation of all of your sex hormones. So you will actually see a, an increase in hormones across the board by the use of DHEA in most individuals. So it's useful to always test in advance, get your baseline, start at a dose relative to what your test indicated would be useful, and then test again. And I encourage people to do that over a course of about six to eight months until they get an idea of dosing that would be appropriate for them. If you have any questions in that regard, consult your physician and work with them. There's a lot of great physicians that can help people uh, in guidance relative to what they need hormonally. And this is just one little category, but it has a huge impact and it's so simple to do. And since it is available over the counter, I like people to know that, hey, you know, this is something that I can control myself. All I need is the information. So I hope that was helpful. That was a, a, a partial dive into some of the sterols that turn into hormones in the body. Realize that fat is not bad. We need it. This is one of the ways that the body uses it. And go out there and have a great day.